Hello, hey, it's Allie J. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I do these passion twists. Okay, so we're going to start on blow dried hair. Um, I've done this style three times now, so I am going to give you tips and tricks on how you can make it better each time. This video is of my first time, so I will be including some footage from the most recent time I've done it just to kind of give you ideas of how you can perfect it each time. So next what I'm going to do is I pull my hair all up into a satin scrunchie. One because the satin scrunchie isn't going to take any moisture out of my hair and then two because I like to work section by section. Um, so I pull it all up and then I'm going to use a small comb to just divide my hair so that I can start working on the sections. So I'm using the brand called Rura Water Wave. You can use pretty much any brand that you want as long as it says Passion Twist or Water Waves. So do not use Edge Booster, you actually want to use Shine and Jam, that's what's going to give you the clear parts like how this looks. Um, but for a beginner, I think I did okay, but going forward you want to use Shine and Jam instead. So I'm going to put the Edge Booster on my parts. Um, again, remember you want to use Shine and Jam instead, so I'm just detangling the part and then I'm going to put my gel on the part to kind of separate it from the rest of my hair. So the real trick to not having to use rubber bands is to use a braid as your anchor. So as I've gotten better at this, I have only braided down about three times, whereas here I braid halfway down and then I go to twists, but really you just need to braid like two or three times to have that as your anchor so that the crochet doesn't slip out. And then after that, you just want to twist all the way down. Um, the reason I do that is because twisting is just easier to undo when you're ready to add the crochet hair and then it just keeps your hair separated so that you know where each part is. So this is what the first row would look like. Again, when I started doing Shine and Jam and I got better at this, the parts look cleaner. Um, so this is what it looks like before I start adding in the crochet hair. And then we're going to start putting our hair up so that we can start crocheting in the hair. So you want to do this by putting in the crochet hook first and then once you do that you are going to put the extended hair on the hook and then pull it through. So I am going to try to show this a couple times. Um, it did take me a while to figure out how to do this but once you get it it's super easy. You're just pulling the hair right through and then once the hair is through you're going to take one half of it and just pull it through so that one side is on, you know, one side of the braid and one side is on the other. And it's anchored in your hair. Once the hair is anchored in, all you have to do is undo your twist, but don't undo the braid because the braid is what keeps the hair in. But you just want to undo the twist and then twist your hair along with the crochet hair. And then that's pretty much it. That's how you get the twist. And as you're going down the twist, wherever your real hair gets a little frizzy, you always want to add more shine and jam just to kind of help it continue to blend so that one, it has some hold, and then two, it blends in with the crochet hair. But also keep in mind, passion twists, while you're twisting them, look kind of like a braid, but once you let them go, they fluff up so it's not going to be as frizzy as you might think it is. And then remember that it is kind of a bit of a messier look so it's not going to be as neat as braids either. And so here I'm just doing the same thing again, you just put the crochet hook through and then you add the hair on. And then you pull the hair through, you pull half of it through, and then you just twist on the way down. So one last time we put the crochet hook through, put the hair on, we pull the hair through and then we're going to undo our twist because that's what we're going to braid with. But do not undo the braid because that's the anchor. After that you just twist on down with the crochet hair and your real hair. 
So a tip that I have if you're doing this the first time, wherever your hair is frizzy, you can add some jewels or beads on to kind of mask the frizziness. But as you do this style more, eventually you won't really have any frizz at all. So this is what it looks like before I put the mousse on and before I do the edges. Um, for my first time, this is pretty good, but again, I'm going to insert a picture here of what it looks like my third time. Um, because this method gets easier and easier the more you do it. So here I'm just adding some gel onto my edges just to kind of give it, you know, a more finished and sleek look. This is completely optional. And then last, I put some mousse all over. Um, you can usually be a little more generous than I was here. Again, you get better as you continue to do it. But I find the mousse is what really sleeks it down. Um, and it gives it that like finished look and also gives it a little bit of shine. After you put the mousse in, you want to put your scarf directly on after, and then you want to keep it on overnight. So this is me the next morning before I head to work. Um, so under on top of the scarf, I also put a um, bonnet just to protect all of my hair. Um, and then you just kind of, you know, shake your hair out. Take the scarf off and then your hair should be laid. You may have a line on your forehead from how tight you had the satin scarf, but that'll go away with time. And this is the finished look. So as you can see, I do have the line on my head, but the hair looks really nice. It looks finished and I love the shine that the um, mousse added. And I also like having the jewelry in there as well. It's just a really nice touch. So here's a view of the back. So as you can see, parting really isn't that important, but I mean, as you continue to do it, the parting will get better, but because the hair is so thick, you don't really see the parts in the very back. It's really the parts in the very front that are the most noticeable. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.